Nestled between the Northamptonshire villages of Silverstone and Whittlebury, it's the circuit called the home of British motor racing, and that is Silverstone Circuit here in England. Welcome to the Proto GT Challenge here on iRacing, Race Squad TV, and iRacing Live. Coming up shortly, the Proto GT race, and it's going to be a great one. Take it from the top. Okay, cool. I'll do it this time. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that the next round of the NASCAR Peak Antifreeze Series, powered by iRacing.com. Sorry, I keep on messing that one up. Why are you changing name all the time? No, just, right. just, just, just do it one more time. Do it okay. one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget the next round of the NASCAR Peak Antifreeze Series, powered by iRacing, will take place on Tuesday from 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Catch it on iRacing Live. Join Evan and the gang for what will hopefully be another fantastic race, some of the best sim racing you'll ever see on the internet. Better? Good, perfect. Nice. Cool. circuit's so amazing it has to straddle two separate counties, both Northamptonshire and Buckinghamshire. Yes, we're here at Silverstone for the Leo Bodner Proto GT Series here on Racewatt TV and iRacing Live. Mitchell Whiteford and Connery Maddock joining you tonight for the action of the hot split race we're broadcasting here in Connery. It's going to be a fantastic race here. Silverstone always provides good racing. This track has wide open corners, good flow, room for multi-class racing. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, as you say, a lot more room than some of the previous tracks we've been to so far this series. Uh, expect a lot of passing and uh, maybe not as much trouble with lapped cars as we have seen before. Certainly not. And well, drivers are out currently into practice and starting qualifying here for this race tonight. We're going to be going around for one hour around this circuit. And of course, we are running the Grand Prix layout. That's 3.19 miles, 17 corners. That's going to be fantastic. Weather conditions tonight? Well, we're looking at mostly cloudy conditions. About 72 degrees Fahrenheit, 80 degrees track temperature. Winds quite strong, 10 miles an hour from the southeast. Humidity on the low side. So, let's see what these guys can pull out tonight. We've got some return names as always. We've got Frederick Rasmussen up there in the GT1 category. He's always one to keep an eye on. Coming home a close second last week. I was like Dennis Garisi in the prototype class as well. And, uh, well, it's going to be interesting to see what we can develop in this one. But as it stands, we'll need to see whether the one and the only driver in your prototype category could come home tonight and actually succeed with this one, Connery. Of course, uh, it's been two, oh, three rounds in a row uh, for the driver belonging to the your racing team. I'm trying to see if he's actually entered the race tonight. We'll, we'll find out very shortly. Um, we 
don't believe he actually has. I'm trying to just find his name here, unfortunately. Should be in the list, but things are going a little bit sideways. We've had some repeat winners constantly, of course, and it's going to be a tough one to see whether they can do it again. Yes, uh, I think Maximum Bonicki is um, absent from this race, so this uh, makes your uh, prototype uh, division wide open. He's been absolutely dominating so far this season, so uh, it'd be <laughs> great to get a different winner so, uh, in this series in your prototype division. But uh, that isn't to say we haven't had great racing, though. We absolutely have, especially in your GT1 division, so uh, this is going to be a great race for sure. And he is, and yes, and I was looking for Maximilian Bonicki. Uh, sometimes my, my brain doesn't brain, but we'll, we'll talk about that later, of course. Um, some great racing we're going to see, of course. The GT1 category, always tough competition. GT2, a little on the low side. We have, I believe, in the order of seven entries for tonight. And they are out qualifying at the moment. We'll see when timers get laid down. Actually, I'm currently on provisional pole for the Echo Vortex Sim Racing team. Andrew Rodriguez behind him. At the moment, that's Odox Motorsports. And we have uh, Matty Kersoja. Uh, He's sitting in third at the moment. And Thibu Veronica in P4. And Mort Uzel in fifth place. So keep an eye on those guys down in your GT1 category. Currently looking like it could be Jurgen Frank taking the pole position tonight. Justin Hickman in second. Austin uh, Canapio in the third place. Frederick Rasmussen and Yoni Tankinen, your top five. Overguard looking dominant in GT2 with uh, Christian Kiewit in second place. Cohen Glockman at Daniel Page and also Ro uh, Rook Garcia looking like he'll be hitting the fourth, fifth place in the track tonight. Tight competition qualifying underway, very early days at the moment, Connery, but looks like familiar faces out front as always. Yeah, um, one standout performance so far on Provisional Paul is Ashley Owen. I don't seem to remember him uh, being up there in your previous races, but he's obviously shown the field that he can do some very quick laps in that prototype. He is currently two, uh, just over, just under, sorry, two tenths of a second uh, ahead of Gabo Max. But uh, some of these uh, drivers still have laps to go as Mir Ozil um, pinches uh, Gabo Max's spot in the second uh, place in your in your um, prototype division with a 33-1. Well, we are certainly going to get two new winners in your prototype of GT2 categories. Of course, Sven Demmel and the driver of Maximilian Benecki missing today. Both of them have better things to do, Connery. Um, so, of course, we'll, they'll, they'll lose that unbroken streak so far as uh, we are out qualifying for position here. Good field of prototypes. 15 cars in that grid. I believe down in your GT1 category, looking at another 15 as well. So that's a big field for those those two. And it looks like we do actually have, in fact, uh, 10. Yes, we have uh, just 11, sorry, GT1 uh, two cars. So slightly larger field than we expected for GT2. GT1, huge this week. Yes, and of course, that uh, that is, in my opinion, the um, most exciting field that we have here. The in the past races, we've had absolutely scintillating nose-to-tail action from that field, so that'll be the field to watch. But uh, again, with Maximilian Bernicke being absent in his prototype field, this is going to be uh, one to watch. Of course it will be, and well, Silverstone, we expect this will be a much friendlier track, Connery, for the multi-class racing, of course. Big wide corners here. Even some of the uh, famous sections like Maggots and Beckett, a lot of room really to get prototype cars and GC cars side by side. As long as they respect each other, of course, the uh, World Endurance uh, round at Silverstone earlier this year. We had a little hiccup there between Porsche cars, but it, there's plenty of room here. Yes, of course, and I believe we're going to go to our grid now, Rachel. So if you uh, take, a, take a run through that for us, please. We certainly will, and okay, go into your grid with the final moments qualifying remaining. It's looking like uh, Vazlas Remy Inc. is going to be taking pole position in your prototype class. Ashley Owen in second place, Mert Erzl in third, and Gabor Mex in fourth. Jurgen Frank on the pole for your GT1 category there, and in second place, Dustin Hickman, Leonardo Corti in third place, and Austin Canepino in the fourth class spot. Down in the GT2 category, Christian Kewitt in pole position, Cohen Klopman in second, Stefan Sigberger in third, and Stefan Overgaard in fourth. The rest of those positions up on your screen now, as uh, we don't expect positions to change with the remaining seconds of qualifying. 
We're going to go to the very grid very shortly and get ready for tonight's one hour race around Silverstone here in England. Of course, Connery is track very, very different to what we've raced at previously. We've had Mossport, we've had Imola, and we've also had Spa. One's high speed, but also technical. Silverstone, much flatter, less elevation changes. Yes, and that brings its own challenges as, you know, the flat track, there's... You're, sorry. <laughs> your, your braking is not affected so much by the elevation changes, so... Um, it's very flat. It's, a, it's an old airfield, actually, so uh, very flat for those planes to land and taxi about. So, yeah, this should be a great race. Certainly pearls of wisdom there, uh, Connery. Aeroplanes don't like landing on hills. That's, that's definitely a problem they've normally experienced, but uh, we are on the grid now, of course, and get ready to see what happens here. The elevation change is definitely not going to be a bigger factor. That's one thing we've seen so far this season, as the field will line up behind that uh, first safety car there in the American Childhood Cancer Association livery. Uh, we've seen three tracks, three very distinctly different ones, but all of them have been fairly hilly. So this will be a definite change for us here. As uh, Spa was really the widest we've had up until now, Silverstone will definitely be a very different challenge for these drivers. And uh, I believe it is in fact actually a, well, the first three positions in GT1 are all from simrc.de team so another spectacular performance from those drivers Build lining up now ready to start out on the formation lap here at silverstone a very long formation lap 3.19 miles around this circuit here and it's going to be a good start to the race. We've seen so far, Connery, good separation between the classes. Class leaders all taking it under their own control rather than going too soon. Spreading out those fields early on. So we do see a good separation occur. Yes, of course. Um, starting these fields quite close together does uh, bring its own set of dangers. So the old class leaders prefer to just back up the field a little bit. Just be a little bit patient to try and separate out the field. Of, uh, of course, we are on the old layout here at Silverstone. We don't have that little infield bit that F1 introduced. So uh, your first corner will actually be Cops Corner instead of uh, <laughs> your usual um, F1 starting course the F1 circuit today going through the farm section but here well we start on the back straight or what is the back straight to the F1 circuit now coming out of Luffield which is actually the final corner now we're going to Cops for the first and look at that GT1 category Connery three Aston Martins there from some RC.de on the front row uh, well, front row and second row before we see two of the uh, Corvette C6R GT cars those guys a spectacular job as always. Kim Erickson, one of those. He's looking to get a great result here. We also have Yoni Tankin in there before we head back to Frederick Rasmussen in another Aston Martin. Up front, of course, uh, it's Romanik on the pole position. We've got a three car lockout again, or in another class, I should say, today for the Gecko Vortex Sim Racing team. It's Romanik, uh, Owen, and Urzel. Those guys looking to get a good early domination here. Gabor Mex going to try his best to. Uh, um, up for his uh, teammates in this one. Actually, no, I, I apologise. Bert Ursel is actually from your racing team there. It's actually Gabor Mexic fourth, who is uh, from the Gecko Vortex team. So, apologies for that little mistake. And Venice behind them there. That is uh, the number 20 car of Odox Motorsports. Looking at a fifth place start for him. Heading now about halfway around the circuit here, Connery. Let's talk about the technicalities after we've come down this long hangar straight here. Heading through Club and Vale, and then the old section and bridge. Yes, of course, um, this uh, Stow Corner is uh, a little bit of a medium speed corner. There are not very many heavy braking zones around here. The first, your first braking, he really heavy braking zone is down at uh, Abbey, which we're coming to now, this left-hander. So uh, you just got to make sure your brakes are warm by the time you get there. Uh, the, your last section of this lap is very, very technical and actually quite slow. So. Um, a little bit of excitement after going around the track uh, with some very very fast corners in corners it's um you have to drive but you have to be very very alert you certainly do and of course this field will be well which is a little start will be very much dictated by the track here for once as you'll come down through club and vale you'll come up through the farm the, the old section here under the bridge and you'll come through luffield corner and that final hairpin really connery 
I think that's where we're going to see our class leaders jump. Yes, of course. Um, they obviously want to get the jump down onto the pit straight and then through cops. So uh, just watch your leaders here and see where they go. We certainly will. And well, the car still tucked up behind the first safety car there. Many is tucked up there nice and tight. Going to be leading the start in your overall position pole in pole in prototype class here. That's a lap for him of a 1 minute 32.885. A very good lap from him. Pole time for GT1 was 141.2. And in GT2, that was a 145. So about three seconds difference there. Four seconds difference between GT1 and 2. But 10 seconds Connery difference. As here we come, the safety car will pull off. Field in command of that number 36 Gecko Vortex Sim Racing car. And we are green flag here at Silverstone as the prototype field jumps early. Almost as soon as the pace car pulls away, and it's a good start there by the car of Murta. So the number 11 Pure Racing Team car almost up into second place here by the first corner, Connery. Yes, of course, and is on and Ashley Owen going too wide through cops. That is, uh, and we're three wide coming down to Maggot and Beckett section. Oh, something pulled out there. I think a couple of mechs pulled out slightly. Did not want to go three wide through uh, Maggot and Beckett as we get the start for the uh, GT1 division. Your three Sim RC cars are up front. Uh, there's a battle going on behind. I think there was contact between Kim Eriksson and Yoni Tankinen there, Rachel. There was a light contact between Eriksson and Tankinen, but nothing major, of course. Frank with a huge jump at the start. His GT2 category has taken the start as well. And that's a very good start by car uh, Christian Kewitt. In fact, they're right on the back of your GT2 uh, one cars. So, a big, big jump by the GT2 field. They really didn't wait long before they went, and like the big GT1 leaders. Uh, so we're going to see some passing through the hairpin down here. We'll keep an eye on what's going on there for your GT1 field. As at the end of your field of prototypes, head through the Luffield corner. Keep an eye on this GT traffic corner. It always has a trouble with these uh, tighter chicanes. So this one, it feels like you if a much more open corner than it really is. Yes, of course. And we'll obviously see later on in the race where the prototypes in the GT1 suck hitting traffic and uh, I don't think there'll be as much as a problem around here as some other tracks as you say uh, before the race that the track is quite wide but uh, sometimes uh, the prototype drivers can be a little bit um, impatient and uh, then incidents can happen. It certainly can and we've got some passing there going under the bridge section for your GT1 uh, field. I believe that was down towards the rear end of your group. That was Nick Thyssen having a go I believe as uh, Actually, no, uh, yes, it was Nick Thyssen having a look. That was quite an optimistic little move from him, but still a good one to be completed there. As your GT1 leader is still tucked up under the back of your GT... Uh, sorry, GT2 leader is tucked up under the back of your GT1 lead, uh, tail, which is a spectacular lap there from Christian Kiewit holding that car. In fact, it's the head of two GT1 cars. Those are Lucas Mitchell and Manuel Sanchez, both of whom have had incidents so far. It's lost, but it's lost them a lot of time. They are right at the back of our field. Still running, of course, on track. In fact, if you look towards the rear, you'll see one of our regular UK9 London SQP stars in at that uh, spectacular 2016 Ford GT livery. That's Ryan G. Walker. So we'll uh, keep an eye on him throughout the race, of course, Connery, as a uh, Scottish driver tries to do his best here. Currently running in last, but he's about to make a pass there on Andreas uh, Jovaskas number 37 car has just gotten through there with a very judicious amount of curb used coming out of uh, maggots and beckers up front in your prototype field it's still Reminyak leading by 1.2 seconds over Ashley Owen Mert Ozil holding on to that third place he did make it as high as second early on but well, he's dropped one spot for now looking further down the order it's pretty much single file here Connery for your prototype field GT1 though still fairly frantic racing Yes, of course, and this is what we expected. We expected the prototype field to thin out pretty quickly, but this GT1 field, as they have been uh, since the start of this season, they're absolutely nose to tail. Uh, your front of your pack, your GT1 pack, it has spread out a little bit. The uh, three, oh, sorry, the two Sim RC cars, I'm not sure what happened to the other one, but uh, you have a battle here for, I believe, fourth in class between Frederick Ramerson and Aust Augustin Campanino. Um, but uh, yeah, he just having you just pulls away a little bit down the pit straight. So uh, some battling going on in this GT, GT1 division, Rachel. 
Yes, there certainly are. We'll keep an eye on what's happening with this uh, category of cars. We'll find out what's occurred for those guys. Uh, I believe it might have been the car. We're looking right now to see who it was actually that lost time in that run. But uh, we just don't seem to see anyone at all. It's just Nickman is having an issue. We'll look back and find out what happened to the third Marcy car there and try and discover what's dropped him down the order. I believe he had a bit of a spin coming to the last section, the last slow section of your lap. Ah, the just, Club Vail uh, Chicane, Connery. Yes, the Club Vail Chicane, and he just takes a little bit too much of the curve and he spins the car around. Yes, it was. Club Vail, as we said, it feels faster than it really is, that section, and you need to be very careful, especially with the uh, Aston Martin and the Corvette in that GT1 category. In fact, he's going to go past Daniel, that's not, not Daniel Page, actually, that's, uh, I believe, Christopher uh, Vyas, his uh, teammate in a different category. No competition there as he works his way back towards the GT1 field. Looking through your GT1 field though, it's still a good lead by your two Simarsi cars at the front, Frank and uh, Corti. Behind them, that is uh, Augustine Campagne, up in one of the Corvette C6Rs. Rasmussen chasing him very closely here. Rasmussen's made up quite a number of spots already, Connery. He's up four spots in the track, Yoni Tankinen. Holding tightly behind him, Kim Erickson also in that line. JJ Nylander holding on there from the uh, that's the Glacier Racing Team. Mika Lurkey as well behind him as well. He's uh, dropped back a little from that group, the number 15 car, but he's still vaguely attached to this group. Yeah, this group we want to watch. Um, usually, what the GT1s do in these races, they all form a big conga line, um, helped by the draft somewhat. But uh, they're all very, very similar on pace, both the Aston Martins and the Corvettes. So this should be an exciting uh, GT1 field. Of course, we knew the uh, the Corvettes had a problem with tyre wear previously, Connery. But of course, our racing with its constant state of being updated and, and, and modernised and improved, um, they have updated the tyre compound specifically on the Corvettes recently to improve its tyre handling and to improve the life of the tyres on those cars. And we've seen the Corvette C6R really come to life this season. It's become a much more viable car. People are really... We're seeing a split field almost of Corvettes and Aston Martins here. So a big uh, shout in favour of our racing technical department there. The best looking of the GT1 cars and sounding in my opinion. Uh, definitely much more competitive in these races. We've seen them really battling for good positions, Connery. Uh, so we'll look there at his number one car of Rasmussen. He is desperate to get past the uh, Corvette of Campano trying to find any option he can. In fact, he's being tailed by Tankin in, in another Corvette, so definitely a very even split there. Yeah, of course, Harrison done a very good job of uh, balancing the, out these GT1 cars as uh, we see this group of three, uh, sorry, four um, cars down to Kim, Kim Erickson just uh, start to look, get a little bit closer now. We're about uh, 10 minutes into this race already, so now they're starting to think, hmm, maybe I should uh, look to be gaining some positions here. At the front of your field, you've got Remenyik uh, in your prototype division, leading Ashley Owen by about one second uh, that time around. Uh, those two uh, uh, teammates are doing very well at the front of their division. Uh, your prototype division is mostly spread out just right now. Uh, there's a group uh, containing the 7, the 37 and the 8 cars of Andrew Rodriguez, Marco Aricano and Dennis Garcia. Um, those guys are getting very, very close, and it'll be interesting to see if uh, these guys start fighting at this stage of the race. You've also got Sayandra at the back of that field trying to catch up. So, some of these guys are closing up. Uh, we are still early doors in this race, though, so far. We certainly are, Connery, and well, out front, it's still a great race for the number 36 car, the Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Team. In fact, he's catching tail end of your GT1, uh, GT2 field here. That's a Romaniac. He's doing a stellar job. His last lap was a 33.9. Still spectacular performances. You'll start going past the tail end of your GT2 category. That, I believe, is uh, not Andreas Stewart. We've got Ryan G. Walker there, and we've also got Kelly. He's getting past those two cars at the moment, and through will come his uh, teammate as well, Ashley Owen. Uh, Turtles are hot on their tail. Making sure they don't catch traffic here at that Club Vale chicane. Definitely, it's what you do not want to be uh, meeting other Spinner traffic. Spinner in front of your leader there, yeah. um, uh, <laughs> Rachel. Um, GT2 car. Yeah, Mozzie Echo just uh, has a little spin in front of Remenick. Yeah, I have no doubt Remenick had a little bit of a scare there. 
Absolutely not what you want to have happening as a GT2 car, especially not what you want to see as the prototype class leader. So lucky escape for everyone there. They seem to have a bit of VRS kind of sim sports luck at the moment, Connery. Yes, of course, and you see the prototype field now catching up to the back of the GT2 cars. This is where endurance and multi-class racing gets very, very interesting. Now these prototype cars have to manage the traffic as well as managing their own race, so this is where things get interesting, Rachel. Certainly is, and well, the cars getting through the traffic very effectively at the moment. Heading towards the front of your GT1 field. In fact, they are not far away from Stefan Overgaard, Stefan uh, Svigvager, Kopman and also Kiewit. So they need to keep their eyes open here. But uh, looking at position 4 in your GT1 category. And that's the side-by-side -side battle there between uh, Campano and Rasmussen. As through they'll go towards the bridge section here. And, oh no, this is Luffield actually. And through will also go Yanni Tankin. He'll get to the inside there of Campano. Gets that one done. Not oh, Not quite done yet actually. He has to wait. That wasn't Luffield again. I seem to be getting my past this track mixed up. Connery is great side by side battling them between the two Corvettes, Campano and uh, Ankinen. Holding us side by side through a very tricky section of the racetrack here. But this really has allowed uh, Rasmussen, that number one machine, to get away. Yes, of course, this is what Rams Rasmussen wants. He wants them battling behind him so he can pull that gap out. But uh, uh, these cars, they're very, very, very similar on pace, and I have no doubt this field will close up again as uh, Rasmussen makes a little bit of a mistake in left field there that allows uh, Campino to just get back a little bit of time, but uh, he's still pulled that gap out just a little bit. Certainly nowhere near enough time for him to really make use of that one, but we'll keep an eye on your prototype field at the moment because Murta Ursula in the number 11 car catching the 10 of Ashley Owen there. Traffic certainly working in favour of the pure racing team car here, Connery, as Owen. Just not quite as lucky with his uh, traffic management here around Silverstone. Just not able to get the clean passes done he needs. Ertzel right on the back here. Of course, this adds pressure to car of Owen. Owen must get through cleanly. He needs to keep himself ahead of that car. Yeah, of course, this is a part of multi-class racing. You can use the traffic to your advantage here. And sometimes it's just based on luck and whether you, where you on the track you catch your traffic. But uh, Matt Ozil is fully using it to his advantage here. Um, I think Ashley Owens just getting caught up as they come up to uh, a little bit of a group of uh, GT cars here. That's not going to do well. Owen any good if he catch when he catches them through uh, Maggots and Beckett's. But down the hangar straight now, he'll get two and one two and one straight here. He certainly will, but that will not go the same for Matt Ozil there, who's down in third place. He catches them right there. Oh, and Stowe. No, that's not what you wanted to see. He has to run wide there. As he nearly runs into the back of the Bushfink Ford GT. Pull up to the inside here for Club and Vale Chicane. That's not what he needed to have happened there. In fact, a light tap on must sending him wide, Connery. So, unfortunate uh, loss of time for Murta. So, in third place there, we'll look back at your GT1 lead. But we have uh, prototype cars off at the moment. One of those is uh, Venice, the 20 car, qualified in fifth place here. He's on pit road early. As is, I believe, one of the other GT1 cars. We've got uh, Matty Edjoza. He's also into pit road with damage on that machine, that 27 car. We'll try and find out what's happened for him. In fact, that was recent, Connery. Yeah, and I think the 20 car of Venice is having a little bit of technical issues. He sort of uh, had a little bit of an issue before um, coming into pits. So uh, I think that's his race done. And he has that car missing the front clip off the bodywork of the prototype. So looking like it's a day over for him as uh, looking at second place in the GT2 category. That is uh, Cohen Klotman. But he's being... Oh, oh, is Klotman actually trying to pass, I believe, the 32 car. Or being passed by the 32 car, actually. That's uh, Zweigwarte, who's down there in third now, who was running in second. Traffic again. The prototype's working against him. He lost track position to the Bushfink machine. Through will come the Odox Motorsports entry there of, uh, that is, I believe, Mark Perez. Makes that one look fairly easily. Not, it's actually Andrew Rodriguez. He gets through early on, number seven car. That's no major issue for him. Xavier Sanchez back in the eighth place in class. He's running well. He's using this traffic well. Catching Rodriguez at the moment. So we're seeing a lot more urgent passing here, Connery, from your prototypes today. Yes, of course. Oh, there's, look there's, at this. Yes, Sanchez gets held up behind a GT car. Now he has two prototypes all over his rear end. Uh, I think Arikano <laughs> says just 
Oh, he's side by side with uh, Eric Teske right now. Arakandu trying to m capitalize on uh, Sanchez hitting traffic, but then he gets uh, into a little bit of a fight with Eric Teske here as they go side by side. It is, and wow, well, the car will, he will get through. I that's Dennis Garisi. That's not Dennis Garisi. We'll, we'll get this one right eventually. That was uh, Marco Acedono. He manages to get through there over the bush Fink car of Teske. But look at this traffic. This is really dense here. That's Overguard. They're going past there at the moment. He is uh, in fourth place in the GT2 field. Look at the traffic in the prototype cars. They are so, so tight there, Connery. All over each other. As This is just going to end up with some very furious racing here as they will insist really on getting past these GT cars rapidly. Yeah, of course. But as a, as a project driver, you do have to be really patient with these GT cars. They don't have as much grip of you. They don't have as much uh, straight line speed as you as they hit another punch of traffic. Uh, this is getting a little bit crazy right now, Rachel. It is a three wide there as you go past Leonardo Corti in the number two car from your simrc.de team. In fact, he has to run wide. Not uh, losing much time to his competitors, of course. It's uh, Rasmussen behind him. That's not Rasmussen, that's the wrong category. That was, I believe, uh car of Stefan Svegvager. And that was Cohen Klopman who was ahead of him. He's got past that car again. As we're three wide, there's a split. The difference there, the GT1 car on the inside, the 31 machine. That is uh, one of the lap down cars, I believe, in that category. That is it's Lucas Mitchell. As he uh, went to the inside with a prototype to the outside. GT2 in the middle. These GT2 cars are getting bullied once again, Connery. Yes, of course, a little bit of impatience there from the prototype drivers, but obviously they don't want to lose that much time behind your GT2 uh, cars, but obviously your GT2 cars don't want to lose much time to their battles uh, with having to let prototypes through. Of course, they don't have to let the prototypes through. Um, the prototypes have to get through of their own accord. Uh, you're not required as a, G as a slower car to move out of the way. It's the responsibility of the passing car to oh, make car the off. Dennis Garisi off the racetrack, Connery. You get a replay of what's happened here for him. The... Uh Echo Vortex car coming into Love Field just comes in a little too hot there. Replay up for you on your screen. Number eight machine there, Greasy losing the back end off onto the grass and an embarrassing mistake for him, but no damage, no one collected, so he gets away with that one. But uh, his heart rate will certainly be up. Yes, of course, he just overcooked it a little bit too much going into that corner again at the back end. Uh, it's very similar to a Skippy incident, actually. Uh, I didn't know uh, these prototypes were very similar to a Skippy, but here we go. <laughs> they certainly are. And that's the number 10 car. Ashley Owens headed onto pit road as we have another prototype for the car off ahead of him there. We will try and see what's happened uh, with, with that one. I believe that was one of the uh, tail end of your prototype field. That's Christopher Barrett. We'll find out what's happened to him. Oh, he just runs wide coming through the cop's corner. Connery loses the back end off onto the grass. Again, manages to slow the car down. Doesn't hit anything but off the track. We'll, we'll find out what's happened to Owen. Owen's been into pit already. Uh, was this an early pit stop? Has he run this race backwards? Yes, my timing screens are showing that he has indeed pitted. He spent about 33 seconds in the pit lane at a 10.7 stop. So obviously Ashley Owen with the early pit strategy here, trying to perhaps undercut uh, his opposition. Well, this is a good call, of course, Connor, because this puts him out of any sort of traffic at the moment. He hasn't got any cars around him. He's going to have to race anytime soon, so... That car can gain precious time early on, which his teammates at the front will not be able to do. So this is about the stage we expected drivers to come in towards the end of the race. We've, we've done about 18 minutes of the race so far. And if Ashley's running this backwards, this is a good strategy to run at somewhere like this, where we have got a lot of traffic. The draft is a major equaliser, so we get long trains of different classes of cars. Ashley Owen looking in a, a competitive edge early on here as uh, Romaniak, his teammate, there, passing one of the SimRC cars in the GT2 category. It's the number two machine, Leonardo Corti, in second place to his teammate, Jurgen Frank, who's still out front there for qualifying on front row of your GT1 category. That's the Nürburgring King. As you can see on top of the uh, home racer SimRC car. So, you guys love the Nürburgring, of course, but they will go through with no real issues at all. Bastelon not doing so well today, Connery. He's down in last place, really, of the lead lap prototypes. That car well out of position from what we normally expect. Uh, yeah, Slob Rachel, I actually team. believe that he has pitted. So Ashley Owen and Bastelon have pitted. Go and move the own pit strategy to try and get an undercut. Of course, you are fuel limited in this series, so uh, you have to wonder if they've figured out that they have enough fuel to the end if they pit here. 
Absolutely, Connery. And of course, we know that normally we see these pit stops coming for a splash and dash, no tyres really for any class at the end of a race. So, drivers running that early on, a track where they know there'll be heavy traffic. This is really a good call we're starting to see from drivers wanting to get out of that traffic, wanting to get more space here, of course. But uh, Baslov really hasn't gained or lost anything at the moment. He qualified in 16th, he's running in 15th. So, that car has not been dialed in all race long. His qualifying time was a 34. He's currently running 37s, which compared to Romanyuk, your leader, that's three seconds off the pace. Maybe he's trying a uh, different strategy to make up for the loss of pace, because obviously if you're off the pace, you can actually try some daring uh, strategies, because you don't really lose that too much if it goes wrong. But uh, Ashley Owen, this is really working out for him so far. He hasn't hit any traffic at all since coming in. No, he certainly hasn't. We'll look at Xavier Sanchez there. Still uh, being dogged by Eric Teske in the bus shrink machine. Behind him, that number 34 car is pushing incredibly hard at the moment. Look at the uh, 16 and the 10 cars as well. Those, I believe, are down in your... I think that's the GT... No, that's the GT uh, prototype class, sorry, actually. Benjamin uh, Perron. And we've also got Xavier Sanchez. Those two getting involved, but... No, it's actually Owen. He's down in position, but he is hitting traffic now, Connery. So, the car having to really work his way through here, but big group of cars ahead of him. This will be a real challenge. Yes, of course. He's caught, caught up to this a big group of cars. This prototype field is actually closing up here at the uh, rear half of your field, um, but uh, they're coming up on a, a group of, I believe, that is GT1 cars uh, of uh, Grabowski, Leinlander, and Kiri. So uh, this will be interesting to negotiate for them as uh, Arikano just. Uh, goes through the inside of a, uh, a couple either of GT1 cars, making uh, short work of them. They are indeed, and now look at the 30 car, that's Christian Kubit running there in the uh, Wario number 30 car. We've seen this one repeatedly so far this season, it's uh, always great to see that car. Wario looking up at us, judging us, but he's uh, flying here, of course, qualified on polling class. He's been running at the front ever since, that's Baslom going past him on the inside as they go past the bridge section there. But spectacular pace from him, still down in the 45 uh, fours, Connery. And he qualified with the 45 one, so that car is still really on rails. Yes, of course, he is absolutely flying right now. Um, there's still those two cars of Baslov and Ashley Owen that have pitted. No one else has come into the pits yet, but uh, expect for people to start coming in now at about this time. Uh, we have about 38 minutes left, so next few laps you'll start to see people coming in. We certainly will. Have a look at uh, Benjamin Perron there, racing with Ashley Owen. Owen has pitted. These guys have not, so this is the tail end of the prototype field. He's caught already here. As uh, so you can see there ahead of him, Cy Andrew of uh, Black Adam Motorsports, the Bush Fink car of Eric Teske, and Xavier Sanchez up ahead. These guys are really under a blanket here, and that's the SHH. Uh, machine of uh, Xavier Sanchez in ninth place. Teske is in 10th. Andra 11th. And this is tight there. It's all there. Slowed down by a GT1 car. As they're trying to go through wide. That's the number 18 car, I believe, of uh, Denis uh, Gabrowski. He is feeling very hounded by the prototypes at the moment. It's all oh, Andra loses the back end. Nearly spins that car. Almost contact there with the car of uh, Gabrowski, Connery. Voiding that one narrowly. But we saw there, of course, that uh, Ashley Owen made that position up and, well, he got through with no trouble. That seemed to really spook Andrew. Yeah, Andrew has really lost out due to that uh, GT1 traffic and a little bit of a half spin that he managed to save. So well done for that, but uh, that can't really make up for the time that he has just lost. And uh, the number 37 car of Marco Acedono is also on pit road now in the uh, driving revolution machine. He's trying to come in for a pit stop now. This looks to be a standard pit stop for him. He pitted from ninth place, of course. He'll drop down the order, but we're seeing a good number of early stops here, Connery, or just before halfway. We're seeing many of these guys come in. Um, didn't see him go up on air jacks, so not expecting this to be a tyre stop. No, I think he's just pitting just to find some clear air, which he actually does have now. Uh, the next car, next slow car up the field is quite a far, a far away. It's about half a lap away, so he's in some absolutely clear air right now. It certainly is. We'll keep our eyes on this fight there between the number 16, the 34, and the 10. 
looking at uh, Benjamin Perron there, Eric Teske and uh, Salsa, the car of Ashley Owen. Owen getting through on position there. As off he goes, Ashley Owen goes off the racetrack and from Ridgewell on a slowdown penalty for that one. We'll have to give up the position to Benjamin Perron. Or not, it seems. So he's not giving that spot up just yet. As it stands, uh, through will go Owen. And, well, in fact, ahead of both of them, it's going to still be Eric Teske. So Teske, the Bushfink car, gaining position over both of them. They are catching in your GT2 category. That's Yoni Tankin in there. And uh, Cambino, he is up ahead of them as well. As is Leonardo Court, he's dropped a spot here. And Rasmussen moving up to second. As, oh, up the inside goes the Bushfink car of Teske. That was hairy. Ashley Owen as well goes through. And Leonardo Corti. Oh, he's forced off the track. Yeah, that's not really the ideal place to pull off a passing move down into cops. I think uh, Eric Teske there just came in like a bow of hell. I do not think that uh, Leonardo Cordy really expected the closing speed there. He has to do a little bit of a dodge and he gets tagged by, I believe that's oh, Connery, Ashley Owen. Connery, look ahead of us though. It's going to be four wide here at Silverstone. Four wide down the hangar straight there. And that was all your classes in one. We had the number 46 car in your GT2 category. That was uh, Konstantinos Malenko. We had Ashley Owen there. We had Eric Teske. And we had Augustin Campino. That was incredible. Four wide racing, not an inch to spare. Yeah, I've never thought I'd see four wide in this series, but I think we just have. Um, well done to those drivers not to uh, make any incident of that. Otherwise, we would have to... Um, uh, uh, perhaps put out a safety car. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't think anywhere on the racetrack other than the hangar straight that would be remotely possible, Connery. But these prototypes are racing hard and they are racing for keeps. Ashley Owen, of course, has pitted. He is ahead of this group here who have not pitted. This is actually for position for him, but not for them. So we'll have to see what happens. But the fact he's passed them already definitely means this is not a race they're really in as they'll go past Rasmussen there in second position in your GT1 category. That's nearly your entire GT1, well it is your entire GT1 field down a lap at the moment, but that battle has spread out a little bit. We could do with a breather, I think, after that one. That was uh, absolutely incredible. I think possibly the safest place those cars could have all come together. Yes, of course. That was uh, some... Uh, it reminds me of Pocono uh, IndyCar going like seven wide down the main street of Pocono. But uh, this is our equivalent here in endurance racing. Three different classes, four wide down the hangar straight. Certainly was. Well. Look at the 25 and the 6 car. That's Perez and uh, the car of Jose Engazos Langer. Langer and Perez there racing for position. Uh, two teammates there at the moment, actually. Both belonging to the Odox Motorsports stable. So, if you want to see any Mercedes or Mercedes action from these boys, as they'll get past the 45 car there of Daniel Page, the Bushfink car. The Odox prototype is running at the moment in the 4th and 5th spot. Great positioning for them. Up ahead of Page, that's Christopher uh, Weitz. He's down in fourth spot in your GT2 category. But look at that closing distance, Connery. Look at how fast Langer will get through there. Just a massive, massive uh, overspeed. Unfortunately, his teammate is caught behind him as he forces it across the the uh, curbing there through the uh, cops corner. That's optimistic. Yes, of course, as we look down into your GT2 vision, we have Ben Warren and David Baraclow having a little bit of a fight. Uh, the gap has uh, increased slightly just as we cut to it, but uh, your GT2 division having uh, quite a few fights here, Rachel. Oh, they certainly are. This race is frantic, Connor. If we're honest, we're expecting quite a quiet race here tonight. Perhaps a little on the boring side, but spectacular racing from these guys, and it's been nothing if uh, exciting, as Eric Teske will actually head onto pit road here. For his stop, we'll keep an eye on him, see if he comes in for tyres or not. Actually, no, Teske's had contact. We'll have to go back and look what's happened here, Connery, but Eric Teske would damage on the back of that Bushfink machine. Yeah, we'll try and uh, get to see what happened to him there. I'm not entirely sure. It must have happened early on in the lap, but yes, actually, um, coming out of the Maggots and Beckett section down the hangar street, he just clips the inside curb, goes onto the grass, and then loses control of the car and hits the rear, uh, well, I believe that is the right-hand side of the car, into the wall. He does. Oh, getting on the grass on both sides of the racetrack. That was spectacular. Uh, we're looking at this, so we're going to try and get a replay for you in just a moment's time. That was uh, coming out of uh, 
I believe the yeah, Magus and Beckett chicane on lap 17 there. That's not what he needed to have happen at the moment. That's unfortunate for uh, Eric Teske. Just terribly unfortunate there, but that car, oh, it appears to be out. He's retired the car, Connery. Yes, that is unfortunate. And I believe there was a single car incident as well, so he'll be uh, kicking himself just a little bit after that one. He's just ruined his own race. Yes, he very much has. And I believe, uh, showing the replay feed there, as uh, I believe we're hearing we've had some sort of incident for. Oh, we've got another Ford GT off the racetrack there. No major issues for him, but uh, we're going to have a look through your field. I'm just trying to put these reports out we're hearing, Connery, but I believe it could be. Uh, one of uh, your GT1 cars has had a big shunt. We'll try and get back to that one, but as we are looking at that one, we're looking up towards the front of your prototype field. Gap, seven seconds now between Ursel and Romanik. That's a big gap, but Ursel has managed to get through on Gabor Mex. For that position, Mex in third place. He's got eight seconds back to Langer. Langer has about a second to Perez, so those two cars are still very, very close. 1.1 seconds between the Odox teammates. Andrew Rodriguez in the sister car. Well, he's been passed by Dennis Garise just now from Ode, uh, Echo Vortex. Move Garise up to P6 at the moment. Jurgen Frank is still leading in your GT1 category. Uh, Rasmus in second place. Campino in the third spot. So it's still leading every single lap in GT2. FN Segvaga is right in the back of him now, though, Connery. This is tightening up. We're about to go for a quick commercial break, but. We'll stick on this here as uh, Stefan Seidwerger is now really haunting your GT2 leader. Yes, of course, and we're coming up to pit stops as well. We are just past halfway through this race. We have 29 minutes, 17 seconds remaining, and this is heating up. It'll be interesting to see what spanner the pit stops throw into the works here for your various fields, but uh, stay tuned for it because it's going to get absolutely brilliant. It certainly is, and we'll keep an eye on this battle of it. Oh, we'll just have to a quick commercial break. It won't be too long, but hopefully this will still be going on by the time we get back, as uh, they don't seem to be closing in too rapidly. Although, I say that now, as every time we plan to go to break here at Race Spot, they go for the move there, as looking to the inside first, the outside now. Ed Varga doesn't quite get it done there, going through Stowe. We have another chance for Club and Vale. We'll look now, good run by that Sim RC car. Can Wario hold him off as he had the right mushroom? We'll find out shortly, but definite uh, pace here goes to Sitvaga. 46-2 for him last time by. Kiewit was a 46-1, so passed a lap by your leader, but it's hard to deny what we're seeing on camera, of course, Connery. Closing in rapidly here is a second place car. Yes, Vega is all over the back of your leader of your GT two division, um, which is strange because Christian Kluwer, he was very, very quick early on in this race. So it looks like either he has lost a bit of pace or Seidsweger has absolutely turned on the afterburners to try and catch up. It looks that way, of course. It looks like he's pushing hard. We saw a couple of wiggles in that Sim RC uh, blue car, the 21 machine of Sidvaga. That car pushing incredibly hard here. You can see him driving into these corners deep and pushing everything he has, but as he, he heads up the road, yeah, that was an in-lap. That's why he was pushing so hard, Connery in lap for Sid Varga. We'll watch this pit stop and see what happens to him. We'll have to see if uh, Kiwit will respond to this one. Hopefully Wario can find a blue shell before his in lap happens. As we'll Keep an eye on that car of Sid Varga. We'll see if he's going to take tyres or not. We expect that will not be a tyre stop for the Austrian driver. Yeah, as we also see the type of Cyandra also coming into the pit. So some of your drivers deciding that this is a good time to pit now and trying to get a pit stop time for Sveiger. It is 13.4 seconds. So great stop. It is a great stop for that GT2 car. In the years, we'll keep an eye on whatever the else is doing at the moment. Cyandra for the Black Adder Road Sports team. He's off pit road now. We'll see what he can do, where he'll filter out, of course. One of the latter cars to actually pit. We'll have to see what he can come up with at this point, but... He's out on the racetrack at the moment, and we'll put out this out loud. We'll just go back to looking at Christopher, uh, no, it's not Christopher Barrett, sorry. Look at Christian uh, Kiewit. The leader, will he come in this time by? Will he react to what we're seeing from your uh, second place car, the one who's racing with him? Not the cleanest corner, they're entering the uh, bridge section as he has a prototype car alongside him. That's Benjamin Perron. 
Yeah, he also had some of your GT1 division in. Leonardo Corte, JJ Nylander, and Mikel Likiri. They've all been into the pits in your GT1 division, so your GT1s are starting to pit now. Yeah, so certainly our GT1 field heading into the pit road. This is about when we expected people, Connery. This is that kind of later stage. We saw the alternate strategy by the prototypes, but we didn't really see it by most of the GT cars, of course. They're just running their fuel down. There's no major advantage coming in sooner. Of course, the traffic difference is what mattered, but... But now this one, looking at the 25 and the 6 of the prototype category, that is uh, Langer and Perez, the two Odox teammates on top of each other here, coming up to slower class traffic. Will this be a chance for Mark Perez to dive on his teammate? Will we see a Hamilton-Rosberg uh, move? Or will they do something sensible? We'll, we'll find out shortly. But it's uh, two Odox drivers there. Tail to tail. Looks like he might be heading to pit road. Is uh, Langer? No, not this time by. We'll keep an eye on that one. Sorry, Rachel. Ashley Owen has just caught past Xavier Sanchez. And Ashley Owen making these moves um, after his very, very early stop. Uh, none, uh, no one else in your prototype division apart from Ashley Owen and uh, Baslov have come into the pits. So, actually, I'll correct myself there. The Marco Aricano, um and Krista Barrett have also been in on your prototype division, but none of your leaders are your prototypes. Well, that will be interesting, Connery, of course. We know that it's about 30 seconds on pit road, including a stop for your fuel for the prototypes. That means that, well, he will filter out just behind, we think, Gabor Mex, but... This all depends on where Gabor Mex and Mertertz will pit and how traffic is for them on their outlaps, of course. With the field being more spread out, we expect they'll see much more traffic, so... This could be a battle for second place for Ashley Owen, of course, who already has pitted. Keep an eye on that timing for him. Now the teammates from Odox, so they're spread out now. Where will Kewitt filter out, though, with regards to the driver of... I... Oh... Clewitt hasn't think. pitted yet, Clu um, Rachel. Clewitt hasn't Vargas pitted. Has. Will he come in this time, though? He will not. Clewitt going for another lap. He is indeed. He's looking at Stefan Sadvago, where he'll filter out with this one, of course. We'll need to see, though, when Kewitt comes in for pit road. Kewitt still staying out of the racetrack. We're going to run that fuel low. We'll have to see what he can pull out of the bag for this one. Well, in your uh, top fives in each class, Connor, at the moment, it's still Romaniak leading from the pole in the prototype category. Murtoz in second place. Gabor Mex third. It's uh, Jose Pendrolos Langer in the fourth place and Mark Perez in fifth. And in GT1, it's Jurgen Frank again leading from the green flag. Frederick Rasmussen's moved up a few places. He's now in second. Augustin Campano is in third place. In Tankin in fourth, Kim Eriksson in fifth place. Down in GT2, it's Christian Kewitt out front again, leading from the green flag. Stefan Overgaard in second, Daniel Page in third, Christopher White's in fourth, and Stefan Sigvaga in the fifth position. In fact, Christopher White's on pit road now for his stop, Connery. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and don't forget, folks, we will be back in just a few moments' time. Since 2010, the highest echelon of sim racing competition has focused on NASCAR and Grand Prix racing. 50 of the best drivers in the world doing battle for championship glory. Each man for himself. And even though there may be teammates on track, each driver is in command of his own destiny. Until now. 2016 sees the start of a new era in World Championship competition with team racing getting its chance in the spotlight. No longer can one driver rule supreme, but you must rely on those with whom you share a car, a setup, a strategy. Endurance racing can be very different to other forms of motorsports, with races in this series lasting either three or six hours. Teams of two or three drivers perhaps on opposite sides of the world, will share seat time, each having to collectively work towards one common goal. Crash out, and it's not just you who you let down. Officially sanctioned by SRO, it will be teams of drivers who will go head to head, car to car, rival to rival, in the pursuit of a championship. And there's over $25,000 in cash and prizes up for grabs. Some of the world's 
biggest sim racing teams are represented. There's also a group of teams who haven't seen this stage before, who want to make their mark and say we can hang with the best. The Team Racing Revolution is here. It's loud, it's exciting, and it lives on iRacing Live starting April 23rd. Welcome back to the Leo Bodner Proto GT series here on Raceport TV and Aris and Live. Rachel Whiteford and Conrad Maddock bringing you back to the action here for the final 20 minutes of the race tonight. And oh, we just saw Murta sort of head to pit road himself. Came out ahead of Ashley Owens, so that was a position saved for him. Abel Mex, well, that's another story. He's heading onto pit road this time by. We will see where he filters out in reference to his teammate. This was a close one, Connery. They were about where we thought they'd both end up on track together when the pit cycle finished. Of course, Ashley Owen pitted early on. Abomex, you went for the late strategy, the regular strategy, so this will really see just how much Ashley Owen's gained. Yeah, as he's just uh, stopped in his pit box right here, we will see what sort of time his pit crew manage. Uh, we're approaching 10 seconds here, which, ah, yes. Um, 10.9 seconds on that stop. That is a very, very quick stop. But um, Urzel is actually through. So Urzel obviously uh, had a very, very good outlap um, after his pit. They did, and Ashley Owen unable to make time over his teammate there, Gabor Mex. So he has to settle for the third place, fourth place at the moment, unfortunately. As a net position is loss of two for him over in the race. Looking back down, though, has Christian uh, Kewitt has still not been down pit road, that Ford GT is milking the fuel here for everything it's worth, but the later he pits Connery, of course, the better he'll, or the shorter his pit stop will be, of course, so major advantage there for your leader, he might actually be getting some time over uh, Sid Varga. Yes, of course, and it might be a similar situation at the front of your GT1 field as well, Jürgen Frank, Rasmussen and Canapino have not pitted so far in that GT1 class. Uh, they are going for an extra long stint compared to the rest of the GT1 cars on track. They are, Connery, but we'll have a quick look at the 6 and the 25 cars. That's the two teammates of uh, Jose Langa and Mark Perez. They are very, very close in the racetrack as they go around the 45 car. The uh, G oh, they're both heading up the road together along with that 45 uh, GT2 car. So that's, of course, Daniel Page heading up the pit road with them. but. This will be interesting to see where the teammates come out, of course. We'll keep an eye on Mark Perez there in that number six machine. Will he get a faster stop than his teammate? Will they come out together? Who will get the better outlap? As uh, this is an interesting one, seeing two teammates pitting neck and neck. Yeah, and Perez was uh, very, very close to his teammate going into the pit entry. He almost ran into the back of his teammate Langer there, trying to get every single tenth of a second out of his pit entry. As you see, Perez, he exits the pit first. Perez has gained a position on his teammate Langa, and it looks like a pretty big gap as well. That is a huge gap. We'll go on board with uh, Jose Langa, actually, uh, the 25 car. He's just got passed by his teammate, Mark Perez, on pit road. So, spectacular stop by Mark Perez in the sixth car for Road Optimo Sports there, as oh, Jose Langa will have to do what he can here to catch up. Have a look at that onboard footage now as he chases his teammate after a sloppy stop there for Langa to do what he can to try and make that time up. Yeah, of course, uh, we had Perez as an 11.4 second stop and Langa as a 13.6 second stop. So he's lost uh, just above two seconds in the pit stops there. That wasn't ideal. No, certainly not. And this is exactly what you do not want to happen, Connery. Have happened, of course, but uh, these things happen in racing, of course. Uh, you, you slide through that box a little too far. You just a little gentle coming into your pit box, of course. and. It can cost you absolutely everything in a pit stop. Pit stops are free time on racetrack, so you need to practice, practice, practice to take advantage, and it looks like Mark Perez did just that. Up front, though, it's still uh, Romaniak leading in that number 36 car for Gecko Vortex. That car in spectacular form at the moment. 
about to lap the front of your Sorry, GT1 Rachel, field. Sorry, Rachel, is just coming out of pit road. He has made his stop. Clear it uh, did a 14.1 second stop. Overguard is also uh, coming out of the pits here. So your leaders of your GT2 division are doing their pit stops. Stefan Sigvager has gotten through. Stefan Sigvager, the 21 car from SimRC.D, has gotten past your race leader for the first time, of Christian Kiewit. He is through by a fairly comfortable margin. Now, uh, Kiewit is still going through Maggots and Beckett's Beckett's at the moment. But uh, at this time, Sigvager, oh, he's halfway down the hangar straight. That's about a four and a half, five second gap at the moment. Yeah, he had uh, Spiker had a, um, a slightly faster start, about a half a second faster. But obviously, he has absolutely nailed those outlaps after he had pitted to be able to uh, gain the position on Hewitt. There he is, and what a spectacular run from him! Of course, just amazing pace we saw there. As uh, so we'll have a good look at GT One. Uh, it's not a part of the position, so we will not look at that. But what we will have a quick look at is. Uh, Back at your teammates of Jose Langer, Mark Perez. Gap has closed up a small amount, but it's not enough at the moment. As uh, the 19 and the 8, that's Bass, Slob, and Dennis Greasy there. Another tight fight here in your prototype category, uh, Connery. As they're going to try and split the difference on a GT1 car. They will take the sensible option there for once, which is nice to see. Oh, very tight though. The GT1 car turns in, nearly seeing uh, Bass, Slob contacted from the rear. We've also got one of the other cars there. I believe that's the car of uh, Marco Acedonio. He is there behind Dennis Garisi in the uh, Gecko Vortex car. It's been ahead of him, oh, that is. That's, I believe, the Bush Fink machine of Daniel Page. Down It is Daniel Page down in GT2. That was a self-spin. He tries to go in deep behind the Sim RC car. I'll get a replay for you there. That was the Sim RC car, Connery of 41 car who did have damage so we'll bear that in mind but that was Christopher Weiss he dives in behind Weiss both of them with damage on those cars and just pushes too hard round he goes all to break most importantly gets that car turned around off the racetrack and rejoins that's not the first incident we've seen here at this corner I think um, that, that curb is catching a few people out causing uh, quite a few self spins so uh, this would be a sign to the other drivers now that that curb takes no prisoners Yes, it certainly will be. That curve has definitely been an exciting one. These four GTs, you've really got to think about the traction circle there, Connery. Driving these cars with lower downforce, you need to really think about, oh, am I turning or am I accelerating? Or am I braking or am I turning? You've really got to balance those. Well, you want the tyres to do one thing. They can either speed up, slow down, or, or turn. So, yeah, you've got to pretty much do one thing at once in these GT1 cars. Uh, they, they're, <laughs> they're not multitaskers. They can't do uh, multiple things with the tyres at once. And of course, the downforce that the prototype category of cars have, that does allow the tyres to multitask, so they can accelerate and turn, which is a major advantage for them. Also, that downforce adding extra weight to those cars, so they can push a little bit harder. But uh, the gap there by Perez in the number six car being cemented for the Odox driver, a gap over his teammate has stayed constant, really. It's about two and a half seconds here, Connery. He's widened that gap up over the teammate. Definitely a big one, but the 19, the 8, the 37, and the 14. Well, that, I think, is uh, 19 and the 8. Those are down in our bottom end of the GT, uh, prototype, sorry, category. Then it's Garisi, Bass Slob, uh, Marco Acedonio. He's oh, in there contact, as well. Rachel. Uh, we got to take a second to try and figure out who's involved in this one, but Canapino is just uh, self-spun off a curb, and uh, he collects uh, a few cars behind him. I'll try and get and see who was involved. I think it was some members of your GT1 division. It was uh, indeed, Kim Erickson was in that, uh, in that wreck. It was. He comes into the entry to the uh, Luffield uh, hairpin here. Loses the back end. Round he goes. Cy Andrew involved there. And Kim Erickson. So a prototype in another Corvette court. I think it's bumped off them and out of the way. But time lost for all those drivers. Of course, Andrew, the last on the lead lap, he was in 11th place. It's Bino well, forces his way back in there as he's split three wide by uh, oh co further contact there that was huge Connor we'll get replay this second incident actually and this is just after he rejoins the racetrack of course and Bino there comes back onto the track in the middle of the two SimRC.de cars that's the nine and the two uh, they are further down your order that's Leonardo Corti and the nine car of Justin Hickman 
recovering from uh, earlier incidents. They get split him three wide there, and the car of uh, Corti just tracks out into the side of uh, Canapino. Off goes Canapino again, and what well, Contadero is just in front of him. What a GT2 car of uh, Simarsi goes straight into the back of his teammates. That is uh, Christopher Weiss. What a huge incident! Yeah, that is an unfortunate incident for your two teammates, Christopher Weiss and Corti. There, I don't not think um, Weiss had really anywhere to go here. They just um, Corti just came across the track a little bit, trying to gain control of the car, but Corti was completely unsighted and ran straight into the back of him. Oh, that was spectacular, Connery, of course. Not something you want to see teammates making contact, but Christopher Weiss really caught unawares there. He wasn't expecting the three wide in your GT1 category and the, um, frankly, shenanigans coming through the final corner there. That car getting sideways, making contact there with uh, Canapino. Come across in front of him. That was really not what he needed to happen, but again, he's continuing. We don't know how damaged the number two car of Leonardo Corti is. He's on pit road now. That car looks... To be retiring from the race. Yeah, just looking at the front of your prototype division right now, Ashley Owen and Gabo Max are very, very close on track together. Of course, they are two teammates, but uh, uh, that doesn't stop the teammates from fighting, of course. Um, they have Matt Ozil in front of them. I do not believe they are catching at this point as Ozil gets past Ryan G. Walker in that GT2 Ford GT. Uh, as Gabo Max and uh, Ashley Owen come up to him now. Um, that gap between the two teammates. Oh, as uh, Gabo Max gets held up a little bit by Ryan G. Walker there. He certainly did just a tiny bit, but that was just a while ago, Connery. So uh, we'll try and focus on what's happening at the moment. But uh, Gabo Max and Ashley Owen through there. Owen catching us, uh, Max very, very quickly at the moment. So we'll keep an eye on, uh, on this one. But Gabo Max there. Uh, he doesn't seem to quite have the pace. Looking at Owen's last lap time, 34.975, based on a uh, 35.413. Double Max definitely slower. You said he was held up, so that's where the time's gone, but Owen's certainly reading this one in. Yeah, it looks like Owen has the faster car of the two teammates currently. Um, the gap has widened uh, because of uh, a little bit of traffic for Owen, but he seems like he's closed that right back up now as they start to catch the uh, GT1 car of Bob Balatala. Uh, he moves dutifully out of the way. He doesn't have to, of course, but uh, it makes it easier for everyone when he does. Yes, he certainly does, Connery. we we'll have a quick filter back here. We've got much much, much more action happening on the racetrack at the moment with these cars everywhere. As we're looking to this one, it's uh, Dennis Garisi having problems. He's in a brake machine. We'll see what's happened to him. I believe he might have... Oh, he's gone off the racetrack. Contact with the wall there for uh, Dennis Garisi. Replay up for you, the brake car. Exiting maggots and Beckett's there. Again, problem similar to the one we saw early on from him where he ran off the track, but this time goes straight off. Uh, tries to get the car turned around, and in doing so, I think makes slight contact. No, no contact with the wall there, just manages to avoid damage, but that car's been off a few times tonight. Yeah, as we look at uh, Dustin Hickman and Kim Erickson in your GT1 division, they're having a great fight, Kim Erickson, in uh, the Corvette, and the uh, Aston Martin is Dustin Hickman, so they are having a great battle at the moment. It certainly is an exciting one. As uh, behind him, it's Hickman trying to find a way past that uh, Corvette of... Uh, of Ericsson. Of course, these cars do handle very differently in the corners, Connery. The uh, Aston Martin is really more of a flow car. The Corvette, it slows down, it turns, it accelerates. It's very much point and squirt here as he tries to find a way past one of the uh, GT1, uh, GT2 cars. I believe that is the 46 car of uh, Constantinas uh, Monzeco as they are getting through Luffield there. Gonna get him easily on the front straight here, but. Ericsson really holding his own here against uh, Hickman. Hickman not quite got the speed to make this one stick. Yeah, Hickman just diving down, trying to get a little bit of the draft off that Ford GT, however significant or insignificant it may be, but he closes right out during uh, Cop's corner here. Uh, now they're coming down into Magus and Beckett's. Usually I think this would favour the Aston Martin, because of, of, as you say, it prefers fast flowing corners, and that is what Magus and Beckett's is. Well, it certainly is. Uh, Maggots and Beckett is really one of the best combinations of corners in all of motorsports, Connery. A uh, sequence of corners so famous, how they tried to model it for Circuit of the Americas. 
They're going three yeah, wide with the section. prototype car. They are. <laughs> that was the car of Christian Barrett to try and get through as uh, Kim Erickson makes a mistake down into Still, I believe it is. I think he'll try to come back on Hickman here, but I think Hickman has a position as we see another prototype Ooh, car trying to make it through. That's your, that's, that's your prototype leader of Romanik. But uh, Kim Erickson, as a result of that, has got the position back on Dustin Hickman. Spectacular racing here in your GT1 category, Ericsson using the uh, lapping car of uh, Romaniak to get that position back against his competitor Hickman, but still a number of laps remaining in this race. I believe Connery looking at the timing, we have uh, about 5 minutes 50 seconds remaining on the play clock, so we're going to be in the region, I think, of about 4 laps to go here. Yes, of course, we're coming up to about five minutes remaining and uh, this is obviously the very closing stages of this race so you'll start to see uh, some desperate moves coming from the drivers that have been uh, trapped behind uh, the cars in front for a while so uh, this should be interesting coming to the closing stages of your race Richard. Certainly will be of course, we've not seen much uh, major on track contact Connery here but well, let's say no deliberate dive bombing contacts we might have seen in the past here as we talked before the show about uh, Prototype Skittle, as we haven't seen any GT2 cards being uh, cast to the winds, but as it stands, uh, we've had a couple of incidents, mostly they've been single half spins and full spins, but looking at the 22 and the 12 car in your uh, GT1 category, that's Nick Thiessen there, as uh, he is racing with JJ Nylander for position. Nylander still in the rear position of that group there, the 12 car. That's a Glacier prototype as the GOT Gathering the Tweakers car of Nick Thiessen tries to hold him off here. And this is, I believe, for ninth and 10th positioning class, Connery. Yes, of course, on JD Nylander, we'll have the benefit of the draft going down the hangar straight here, down into Stowe. I do not think he's going to be close enough for a move, and in fact, not even close, but he does... Um close up right to the back of Nick Thiessen here. Uh, perhaps he'll be thinking about a move in the closing stages of this race. We only have a few laps to go with 4 minutes and 25 seconds remaining. We certainly do. We're looking at about 3 minutes, uh, three laps now, Connery. Keep an eye on when that play clock runs out. It has been a fairly flawless race though from a number of our drivers. Um, Romaniak out front has had an untouched race. That car, the Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Team, running at oh, perfect pace at the moment. Still running in the 35s for an hour on the same tyres, so spectacular pace from him. The last lap was a 35.8 for him, and Ertzl in second. Well, the best he can do is, I believe, a 35.9, so similar pace, but of course traffic will factor. Ashley Owens up to third place, he's gotten past Gabor Mex, so a good position gear for him. He'll still get a podium if he can hold on to this one. He's actually pulled some gap on Mex, he's two seconds clear of his teammate, so advantage goes to Ashley Owen after that early pit stop working out for him. Not enough for the win. Jürgen Frank in GT1 has been absolutely flawless, Connery. He's out front by about eight seconds now. And Carr has just put no single foot wrong for the SimRC.de team. Pole to looking like a victory. Well, not jinx him, of course, but that car has just been dominant today. Rasmussen, well, he climbed up from 24th to 14th. He's gained 10 spots in his race so far. Rasmussen having a spectacular race here. Stefan Seikwager... Oh, he does qualify just further back from pole in your GT2 category, but he's took that position in the pit stop cycle from Christian Kiewit. And Kiewit's still running in second place, but the gap has definitely stretched now. Not looking like a possible win here for the uh, Warrior machine, Connery. Unfortunately, Mario will always get his way. Uh, yes, and uh, we're getting reports that the 22 of Nick Thiessen has actually uh, spun his car around. I believe that is while he was battling with JJ Nylander. JJ Nylander just goes down the inside, and uh, oh, he, Nylander, there's contact as well. There uh, is. Nylander went in too hot into the corner and uh, locked up the brakes a little bit, and uh, Nick Thiessen ran straight into the back of him. A uh, tough incident to call there, Connery, but I think we have to put that one, of course, on uh, Nick Thiessen. He was, uh, as much as we love Nick, uh, unfortunately they were side by side entering the corner, so as they break they're side by side, they turn in, and Nylander is passed, Eason just doesn't break quite hard enough, and there we saw the contact between the car of uh, Arcedonio and Fabio Sanchez as they are running there, unfortunate, but a little tap, no major damage. Yes, of course, and there were two two, two prototypes of uh, Benjamin Perron and uh, Langer behind that. They lost a lot of time slowing up for the car in the middle of the track. 
Uh, they're still very close together on track, Langer and um, Perron. Actually, Perron is laps down, so uh, yeah, they're not lost, lot of lost time for your prototype division. Yes, it certainly has been. As uh, on our play clock, we have one minute twenty-three remaining. We'll keep an eye on where our leader is in the prototype category. That is uh, Rumeniak. He's heading now through the club and veil section. So. I believe the next lap will be our final lap. We'll get the white flag this time by Connery. As he will head now towards Bridge and a flawless race from uh, Balaz Romaniak. Just absolutely flawless. And goes for Jurgen Frank and a spectacular recovery there from Stefan Sidvager, who did have uh, some time loss early on. He's recovered that one spectacularly in a very clean race for the Simarsi car there. Looking like Rasmussen will, uh, so Yannick Tankin will also give himself a podium in GT1. The Glacier TV machine there, running in third spot. He's uh, got past Trendel, Hickman, Eriksson and Calabino. Up to that position now, he will keep that one we believe, but as it stands towards the uh, final lap there, Reniek will come across the line here. Reniek heading on to that final lap, white flag in the air for your race. as. Uh, now it's my turn to be on replay, so, whoops. Heading down now through Stowe Corner. Uh, fantastic racing here, Connery. This driver has been flawless throughout. Coming up to lap, uh, the car of Cy Andrew there, last car on your lead lap, really, for the prototype field. Andrew involved in a number of incidents today, including one with Canapino. In fact, the one that spurned that massive pain reaction we saw earlier on. Yes, of course, and Cy Andrew is just about to get lapped by a prototype leader of Remenek right now. The play clock is at zero, so we should be coming out to the last lap right now, if not on the last lap. Uh, you can't really tell with these things sometimes as Remenek hits another little bit of traffic. This will be no problems for uh, Balas Remenek. That race has been absolutely spectacular. 9.5 seconds over Mert Ursel, his teammate in second place here. He will come through the Luffield sequence for the final time. That's the number five car. The leader, Jürgen Frank, in your GT1 uh, category ahead of him. In fact, I believe if he gets past here, this will be the end for uh, Jürgen Frank also. But Frank lifting off there as they'll cross the line. And they will slow down now, as that is, I believe, the race completed for those cars. Although they don't seem to be slowing down, as uh, it's tough to actually get the measure actually on this one. As No, he is slowing down now, Connery. I think that is the final lap. Yes, of course, there are different types of rules in iRacing where where it where you come out of, that when you run out of time, it's either this lap is the white flag or this lap is the last lap, and it's quite hard. And it's, you sometimes confuse the two, but um, you see the rest of your field coming across the line now. Mark Perez is in uh, P5 for your prototype division. Uh, the rest and Spiker has actually won your GT2 division as well So well done to all of your class leaders for winning their particular races uh, I think Spiker had uh, the more challenging of the three but uh, the the other two uh, Remenyik and Frank they were absolutely dominant in their classes Absolutely Connery and as we've got the finishing positions we will go through your finishing grid and your final race results Balas Remniak comes home with the win today at Silverstone for the fourth round of the Leo Bodner Proto GT Series here on iRacing Live and RaceSpot TV. Second place goes to Mert Ertzel. Ashley Owen comes home in third. Jürgen Frank takes a dominant victory in GT1. And in second place, Frederick Rasmussen. Johnny Tankinen rounds out your podium in GT1 with a fantastic third place. Stefan Seikwager won it on the pit strategy in GT2. He will come home there with his class win. Christian Kewitt, your pole sitter in GT2, unfortunately, settles for second. Stefan Overgaard comes home in third, rounding at that podium, and a fantastic one it was for him too. And, uh, well, rest of us up on your screen. We're going to pop away for a quick commercial break right now, and when we come back, we'll hopefully have a chat to a couple of drivers. Catch us soon. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that the next round of the NASCAR Peak Antifreeze Series, powered by iRacing.com. Sorry, I keep on messing that one up. Why do you change the name all the time? No, just, uh, just do it one more time. Do it okay. one more time. 
Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget the next round of the NASCAR Peak Antifree Series powered by iRacing will take place on Tuesday from 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Catch it on iRacing Live. Join Evan and the gang for what will hopefully be another fantastic race, some of the best sim racing you'll ever see on the internet. Better? Good, perfect. Nice. Cool. Welcome back to the Leo Bodner Proto GT series on Iris in Live from Racebot TV. And well, unfortunately, we've not got time for any interviews tonight, so thank you for sticking with us. Unfortunately, we'll hopefully get some more for you next week. But don't forget, the 13th of July will be the next broadcast, that's next week, and that'll be the Nurburgring Grand Prix circuit. So, round five will be there. We'll see if uh, we get some returning names and returning winners in the series. Fantastic racing here tonight at Silverstone. Absolutely spectacular racing, exciting to the last moment. I've been Rachel Wyatt, of course, as joined as well by Connie Maddock and Hugo Luis on the cameras. See you same time next week.